Google, what the, what are you doing? Oh, they never fail to disappoint. I mean, they always succeed to disappoint. What I'm trying to say is that the, the encompassing thought process behind this entire event was underwhelming disappointment. Everyone is just so uninterested in anything they had to talk about today that even Google didn't have like a significant moment where they were like, here is the Pixel 4, because of course we've all seen it before, which sucks out of the joy out of the event. I told you guys this, if you tweet out the phone four months before the keynote takes place, then there's no excitement left in the room for the keynote. So throughout this whole event, they're constantly like, uh, and here's the Pixel 4, I guess, uh, to showcase a feature that no one is interested in. Anyway, yeah, you got it. Apple Sheep's ranting today. Let's begin. All right, so first of all, there was a ton of stuff in this keynote that didn't need to be there. I almost felt like it was more of a Nest keynote than it was a Google keynote. It was all talking about these smart home security features and how the new Google Nest Mini is made from recycled water bottles. And yet the event, they only talked for an hour. And I feel like most of us would have loved to hear more about the hardware since this is a made by Google event. And you could go for two hours if you just didn't put so much fluff in it. Also very, very disorganized. One second, they're talking about the Google Assistant. Next second, they're talking about new hardware, then they're talking about recycling and the environment, and then they have random people come out on stage and talk about things that aren't related to other things. Just very scatterbrained. This whole keynote was just all over the place, but let's try to focus on the actual hardware they announced. First of all, their AirPods clones, which are more expensive than the regular pair of AirPods, which of course they act like they were the first person to come up with. Like, no one has ever had the thought process of putting earbuds without wires between them. They cost 180 bucks. They're not even ready yet. They don't launch until the spring of 2020. Probably gonna go up against uh, Apple's own AirPods coming soon. And they have the exact same battery life of the first gen AirPods that came out three years ago. Five hours per bud, 24 hours with the charge case. So Google was like, hey, we can do what Apple's done, except ours is $10 more expensive and we just came out with ours. So there's not enough to review off of them. I can't test the sound quality, obviously, or the microphone quality. I'm sure everybody will do that when they come out, but man, is Google kind of late to that parade? I mean, we've had Galaxy Buds for a while now. Even Microsoft beat Google to the wireless earbud game, which I found funny because Google had the guts to call that wearables on stage. Their wearable department is in their one pair of headphones, which speaking of headphones, the Pixel 4 no longer comes with headphones in the box. Even though it's the exact same price as last year and the Pixel 3 came with earbuds, they don't have these anymore. And that's just a huge continuous trend we've discovered with the Pixel 4 this year is that they're leaving out a ton of stuff they used to include. So the dual camera on the front of the Pixel 3 is no longer there. Also the screen to body ratio moving backwards, obviously. I know a lot of us didn't like the notch, but I did find it funny that Google's the one company that year over year decided to increase the bezels without a price reduction. It's okay if you want to go with traditional designs as long as you're saving money. They are charging the exact same thing as last year and giving you less pixels than before in the Pixel 4 phone. They also tried to brag about the OLED display on these things even though it has a 100,000 to 1 contrast ratio. By the way, to give you some perspective, the iPhone 10 had a million to 1 contrast ratio, so that's 10 times as high. And now the X the R displays on our iPhone 11 Pros have 2 million to 1 contrast ratio, but they were bragging about their 100,000 to 1. I am glad they went with a 90 hertz display. That's one of the few things they added this year that I'm okay with, but the reason I'm concerned is they really didn't do much with the battery technology. They did not talk about batteries for a single second of this entire event, and there's a 2800 milliamp hour battery in the $800 Pixel 4. This is the smallest battery capacity of any phone at that price point, and with a 90 hertz display, display, that's gonna suffer from it. I reviewed the regular Pixel 3 last year. The battery life was pretty terrible. The fact that they're adding 90 hertz while also shrinking the milliamp hours this year is a big concern. The battery life on that regular 4 is likely gonna suck. I'm also getting a text from John Prosser right now who is telling me the Pixel 4 does not come with unlimited free high quality photo storage. So if that was a feature you liked about Pixel phones, unlimited photo storage, they took that out this year as well and it gets even more interesting. Not only is there no expandable storage, so you can't put a micro SD card like you can in some other Samsung phones. But also, there is still only 64 and 128 gig storage options. So all of you out there who want 256 or 512, or some of you said it was a shame that iPhones don't have a one terabyte configuration because Galaxy phones do, your Pixel 4 is gonna be locked at 128 gig. That is all. You cannot get more than 128 gigs locally on a Pixel 4. It's literally impossible without backing stuff up to the cloud. Instead, I'm 
mention that these phones are more expensive than the iPhone 11. The other hilarious part of this keynote was the hypocrisy surrounding the Pixel 4 camera. It almost felt like they weren't going to talk about it. They didn't bring it up until the last 15 minutes of the keynote. And to watch a company that has openly on stage said, we can do what other smartphones can do with one camera. We don't need multiple cameras. To then have a guy come out on stage and say, having a telephoto lens is helpful for zooming because when you zoom in on things, it'll look more clear. <laughs> what is wrong with you? How have you not realized that since we've had the iPhone 7 Plus for years now? Apple doesn't even sell the 7 Plus anymore. And that was half the reason they added it. Google acts like dual cameras were only added for portrait mode. No, that was just one feature they added that provided a benefit for analyzing data. The whole reason so many smartphones were adding telephoto lenses was so that you could zoom in without losing quality. And then Pixel comes out and acts like they're the ones who thought of this? Guys, guys, oh my god, it's embarrassing. And the biggest loss is, of course, that everyone this year, most average everyday consumers, have all agreed they would much rather have an ultra-wide lens on the Pixel than a telephoto. That's where Galaxy S10e got it right. That's where the iPhone 11 got it right. A telephoto is an enhancement on digital zoom. An ultra-wide provides you an angle that you haven't seen before. And a lot of people may reference back and say, Drew, I thought before you would rather have a better telephoto than a better ultra-wide. And to people bringing that video up, I'd rather have both. That's the better way to do a smartphone camera, is to rock a telephoto and an ultra-wide on board, because software is going to do better when it has more hardware to work with. Google, I'm looking at you. But the telephoto lens is honestly not even that good. I mean, it's a 16 megapixel sensor, so it's a little bit better than the regular 12 megapixel sensor. But the low-light performance on it is also not too amazing. It's an f2.4 aperture, which maybe a year or two ago would have been decent. But now, on the iPhone 11 Pro, my telephoto aperture is f2.0, meaning that my iPhone camera has better low-light performance with that telephoto lens than this recently announced Pixel 4. The camera is also not capable of 4K at 60. The iPhone 8 can do that. It's 450 bucks. The front-facing camera is 8 megapixels. To give you perspective, the iPhone 11 is 12 megapixels. And the front-facing camera cannot record anything at 60 frames a second. And the rear-facing camera is still capped out at 4K at 30. There's no 24 FPS option, and there's no 60 FPS option. So it's just got to be 30. I am shocked that they are still selling this thing without shipping 4K at 60, even though sub $500 phones can do that now. Absolutely ridiculous. They even brought it up on stage. Someone needs to tell Google you should not bring up things you suck at. The guy talking about the Pixel 4 camera literally said, now we know some people like having ultra wide lenses, but we think having a telephoto is more fun or more useful. Don't directly bring up your disadvantages on stage. They even went as far as to show this picture and they were like, okay, so it's a night mode shot, but we know we're not picking up the dynamic range of the forest in this picture. We know that looks dark. So this is a situation where the Pixel 4 doesn't work very well. And when I was watching that part of the keynote, I was like, okay, so they're going to showcase how they have some kind of extended dynamic range and how they can actually make this work, even though regular DSLR photos cannot make it work. But no, they didn't have a follow-up to that. They were just like, no, it can't work here. It doesn't work. But there might be updates over time and maybe it'll get better. So we'll get back to you on this one photo we took where the Pixel 4 definitely isn't doing very well. What? Just from a marketing perspective, Google, I'm not even rooting for you. I want you to stop making these flagship phones. Make more phones like the Pixel 3a or the Nexus. If you're gonna not have the hardware everyone's used to having, then sell at, you know, cheaper price points. Don't try to sell $800, $900 phones when you're gonna leave out hardware that the competition is crushing you at. Like a year ago, the 90 hertz display, I would have been impressed by that, but now we've had the OnePlus 7 Pro, the OnePlus 7T, both of which are cheaper, and the 7T Pro, of course, with 90 hertz displays, and also way better screen to body ratio, way less bezels. Those phones look way more futuristic if you care just about having a high refresh rate display, not to mention the ROG phone too with a 120 hertz OLED display, also at $800. Also, OnePlus is also crushing Pixel in the storage and RAM department. The Pixel 4 has 6 gigs of RAM and a Snapdragon 855. It's not even the fastest Snapdragon chip available right now. The OnePlus 7T has the 855 Plus, and also Google is getting the Snapdragon 855 just a few months before the next generation Snapdragon chip is coming out, in March. So they're so behind on so many ways, they've missed the point on so many demographics 
graphics that if Google's not excited about the Pixel 4, which at this event they clearly weren't, how are we supposed to be? They hyped up this solely radar chip, which had all this buildup leading up to this event of, oh, but Google's got that gesture control. They can do things with that phone no one else can do. And they advertised like three things. They were like, it took years for us to figure out how to develop a radar chip that could stuff into a phone this size. What is it you just were? Oh, skipping songs, uh, silencing alarms, and uh, avoiding a phone call. That was it. That was all they come up with. Hate to do it, but guys, the Galaxy S4 did this. No one really cared, so Samsung stopped investing in it. I don't care if the radar chip is better than the S4 air gestures. Samsung would have improved air gestures if they saw people asking for it. No one's asking for this. They keep advertising, look, you can skip songs by just air gesturing. Just tap the screen. Tap it. It's a touch screen. That's what it's for. Oh, when an alarm goes off, you can stop it just by putting your hand in front. Press the screen. Stop. Alarm. Stop, you don't need to gesture the, oh, that's great. You fit a radar chip in a phone so we don't have to touch it as much because it looks so ugly. I don't understand why they took so many steps backward, but they barely talked about face unlock on stage. They didn't say it was the most secure face unlock. They said it was the fastest secure face unlock, which I'm sure it's plenty fast and I'm sure it works from landscape mode and stuff like that, like Google talked about earlier this year. But I'm also sure that because it's Android, there's not gonna be that many third party apps that are gonna let you secure using the Pixel 4's face unlock. That adoption rate is probably going to be a lot slower than Apple's face ID. And there's no fingerprint reader. So before you get ahead of yourself, they just remove that entirely because Apple went with secure face unlock and no fingerprint reader. So of course Google did too. They also unveiled the Pixel Book Go, which is kind of stupid to me. It's like eight gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of storage with an Intel Core M3 for 650 bucks. And I'm sure there's more expensive versions for a Chromebook. Still too much, Google. I mean, it's a little bit cheaper than the Pixel Pixelbook, but still too much. Chromebooks should be like sub $300 in order to be worth it for people because they literally just run Google Chrome. I don't know why people want i7 cores in their Chrome OS devices. Gotta open all those RAM tabs. And they talked about their Nest Wi-Fi routers that can also have the Nest Mini speaker built in. So why not just merge them into one product? I, I don't know, but thankfully no Pixel Slate follow-up. They didn't want to continue with that, but there was a lot of fluff in this keynote. They had this lady come out on stage who I don't know what her goal was in this keynote because if it was to get me excited for this phone she seemed the most uninterested and bored in the camera phone as she kept referring to it as anyone I've ever seen so I have no idea why they wanted to speak with her on stage it's a brand new language and you know if you want to do something more specific then you know then you may be fall into another category and you're a photographer but it's, it's just really great that um, this is available for everyone to, to use. I'm the event was only an hour, but it honestly felt like 12 because everything was just moving so slowly. And yet we got very little information out of it. All the tech specs we had to just go find on stage. Nowhere in this event did they talk about battery performance. Nowhere in this event did they talk about the CPU performance. It was all just security and we care about privacy and security and privacy. You can ask the Google Assistant to delete all your voice data, even though that should be on by default just a joke. I hope this flops. I really do because I want Google to realize they're missing the point with flagships and they need to just cater to more budget-friendly smartphones. That's where they shine greatly. I liked the Pixel 3a. That was like my favorite Pixel phone I've ever used just because it was affordable and decent. And if you're gonna do traditional designs, that's fine. It's just why do they move backwards in so many departments? Anyway, that's the Apple Sheep rant on the matter. What did you guys think of the Pixel 4? I'm sure some of you are gonna disagree and say it was an amazing phone. Feel free to let let me know what you're thinking by hitting me up over on Twitter or joining our Discord. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I'll see you in the next one.